1871, more not great stuff is happening in Chicago. The Great Chicago Fire ended up destroying most of the breweries. This super sucked for Chicago, but this was really, really good for Best Brewing Company. By the end of the 19th century, Milwaukee actually ended up controlling like 30% of the entire Chicago beer supply. Obviously, Best Brewing Company probably benefited a lot from this, and actually by this time, Frederick Pabst decided to make a jump for it and decided to change the name. He could take this any direction. Like, Best Brewing Company kind of sucked as a name. Empire, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It reminds me of like Emperor's New Groove, but he doesn't. He calls it Pabst Brewing Company. Now, because this brewing company actually was passed down to him by his father-in-law, you would think that like he wouldn't put his last name in it. What happens if he has a daughter and he wanted to pass it down to her or her husband? They would have a different last name, presumably. I don't know. I think it was just kind of crazy that he put his last name in it, but whatever. Despite their lack of creativity with their name, Pabst was actually at the forefront of the market. However, things weren't super bright and shiny for them all the time. They actually ended up operating at huge losses in Chicago in the 1900s and in the 1910s. But Frederick Pabst just must've seen hope or something because this man did not pull the plug. He was super bullish on Chicago. He really understood their influence. He probably knew that Chicago was just way more electric than Milwaukee. I kind of agree. If I was gonna do a girl's trip right now, I'd probably go to Chicago over Milwaukee. Chicago really was his ticket for long-term growth. And at this point, he did what any good company owner would do. He chased clout. He bought Chicago's Union Hotel and the Great Northern Theater. And these were both super large scale advertisements for Pabst. 1893, the Chicago World Fair came to the city. By the time this actually happened, Pabst already was established in the city. People already knew it. They were already really cool there. This thing sounded like a banger. 27 million people came. And in today's currency, it would have cost like over $43 million. To put that in perspective, that's more than the population of Florida. One event at the World's Fair was called America's Best. And we actually have no idea if Pabst Blue Ribbon won, but regardless if they won or not, Frederick Pabst ended up really liking just how the Blue Ribbon looked. Frederick Pabst liked the Blue Ribbon so much, in fact, that with every bottle sold, there was a little Blue Ribbon tied around the neck. Now, I actually really like this idea. I feel like creative juices are finally starting to flow. The Blue Ribbon could really help with brand recognition, really smart on their part. In the 1900s, they finally changed their name to the one we all know and love, Paps Blue Ribbon. Now the Blue Ribbon idea stuck around for a while. They ended up going through 1 million feet of Blue Ribbon every single year until World War I. And that's because there was a silk shortage. Now, although in the 1930s, those silk blue ribbons had to take a halt, they ended up experimenting with other types of packaging, including the can. Pabst was actually one of the companies that helped test the viability for the can. Now, although they started experimenting with the can a long time ago, it actually wasn't until the 1950s did the can really catch on. Obviously, it's a lot harder to keep a ribbon wrapped around a can than it is to have wrapped around a bottle. So that's where they came up with the label. They decided to just smack the blue ribbon right on the label rather than having it around the neck. Like I said, this is the 1950s, so the people that they're really trying to target here are the stereotypical man's man. This group of people must have really liked PBR because in 1977, their sales actually hit 18 million barrels. However, this is where their sales peaked because over the next two decades, there was a decline. 